Okay. I hope everyone can see that. Yes. All right. Okay. All good. So, is that a recording? Yes, we are, Alex. Please go ahead. Okay. All right. So, let's, let's just, uh, you know, get started, right? Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining the web webinar. So, let me just have a quick introduction about myself. My name is Alex. Uh, as Roger say, I'm the technical marketing engineer for the email security based out of Sydney, Australia. And I have another colleague, uh, Jennifer, with us today. Uh, he will take care of, she will take care of your questions and you, you might want it to bring up in the, in the WebEx chat room. Um, today, there are a few topics that um, I, I reckon is kind of important, uh, which Cisco has launched and introduced in the market publicly. I'd like to talk about the key features that is released in the Xing OS version 12, as well as the latest additions of the Cisco Amos Security Services. I also like to uh, bring up the uh, the single SKUs that are going to help you differentiate email security um, from the other competitors in today's market. And of course, never forget to remind you the usefulness of um, our Threat Analyzer 2 for uh, all the 365 customers related opportunity. Well, before I start the presentation, uh, I'm putting this up to make note that some of the features and controls in it is still under this stage of the development. The information provided in the slide is a directional guidance. So the roadshow is, uh, sorry, the roadmap is subjected to change, so it may be delayed due to unexpected circumstance. So with that, let me go over the, uh, the agendas for today. So only four things that need to cover in the webinar, but there's so many informations that I uh, will share to you. So stay with me as long as you can possibly able to do. Uh, first of all, I'd like to talk about the key features we will introduce in Axing OS version 12.0, uh, some of the additional products and the services update along with a quick demonstration, if the time allow, uh, on the features 12 uh, via the uh, Cisco Cloud Email Security uh, Portal. I will give you the overview of uh, each uh, new email security service. Uh, for some, should be well aware of it by now. Um, I need to emphasize that the new SKUs uh, which we have introduced for email security and advanced mail protections offering uh, that are already able to be found in the global press list. And of course, I'll continue to talk about securing O365 customers and never forget to remind you about the awesome piece of these tools, the threat analyzers that will help you um, to, uh, to help your O365 customers to find out the threat that uh, the security protections that fail to catch and are now that able to be uh, intruding into the user's mailboxes. So the threat analyzers will basically pick it up and show them that this is how much you have been invaded. Uh, and last, I'd like to show you some valuable resources that basically help you to capture the email security business down the road. Okay, so let's have a quick um, announcement today that at the beginning of this week, uh, Roddy Carty just published a 2018 security email security gateway uh, quarterly report. So for third times in a row, Cisco has topped the spot. So see the attached graphic showing relative pos uh, positions of our competitors in the latest report. Uh, in the absence of Gartner Magical Quadrant, so uh, because it's top of, uh, uh, of publishing the uh, the security email gateway uh, Magic Quadrant report, Radicali is the only analyst firm that publishing vendor comparison table in 2018. So I encourage everyone to leverage the report and most important, the fact that we are leading for the third times in a row against our competitors, especially Proofpoint and Microsoft who continue to remain uh, di diagonally uh, uh, opposite to us in the quadrant. And then also feel free to click on the link at the bottom right corner to download the actual report uh, and our response, which are hosted in the Sales Connect. All right, so whether physical, virtual cloud or hybrid Cisco MS security solutions are recognized as a leader uh, because of that we're able to offer the fast comprehensive uh, protections, uh, often hours or day ahead of a com uh, competitions. We only share one of the largest network of a threat intelligence built on extensive collective security uh, ana analytics uh, from the Cisco Talos. The outbound message protection to on-device data loss prevention uh, and email encryptions, and last but not least, the low total cost of ownership with the small footprint, easy to implementations, and automated uh, administrations that yield saving from, for a long-term basis. All right, let's jump on the first topic in this webinar. This is a good opportunity for me to introduce a few of the important features that are available in version 12 uh, that's slated to be released in GA sometime this or next month. I hope definitely it's not gonna be uh, next, next year, but definitely gonna be in the end of this year, right? 
So the, the versions will be released pretty soon. Okay, so the first one that I like to introduce is the external track fit via, uh, via the sticks and taxi. So we support stick and taxi in version 12. Uh, there is a reason behind why we make such a move. Uh, the bottom line is many customers uh, own the dedicated Intel team uh, and SOC, and they tend to use more local based intelligence, uh, threat intelligence to the environment to fit the CES. Right, so what is CES stands for is Cisco Emo Security, so henceforth I mentioned as a CES. Uh, Cisco Talos feeds, uh, feeds are the global basis, but they want something that is that is more local, uh, uh, that's more vertical, uh, you know, Intel's that customers wanted to uh, add uh, dynamically. So when ESA make the polling connections with the external feed, a uh, few types of IOC such as IP, uh, URL, email addresses, the file and the shard types can be used to take actions using the content filter as well as at the head level. Uh, with the ability to consume the external threat information in the appliance, CES can help the organizations to uh, proactively respond to the threat, uh, cyber threats such as the malware, the ransomware, the phishing, and the targeted attack. So that helps improve the overall efficacies of the appliance. So Dane is not a very cool feature in the version 12. Um, so what is the problem statement here, right? Is because the SMTP over TLS between sending and receiving email service is very susceptible to the uh, man-in-the-middle attack. Um, the attacker intercepts things and strip off the start TLS and makes it appear that the peer TMA does not support TLS, right? And you know what happened to the rest of the story. Uh, the attacker will easily receive the email that you're not supposed to send out without the TLS enforced, right? Here's where the Dane stands in and why we need to have this included in this version, right? Dane, it's Base is actually the abbreviations of the DNS-based authentications of name entities. So it's actually allowed a domain, a receiving domain, to declare a TLS uh, policies out of band. Uh, the TLS policies is reflected in the domain TLSA record. So this is the record that is sitting on top of the most important uh, piece of another DNS record called a DNS sec, right? So if the NTA hosted a, a domain that comes with the secure TSA, uh, TLSA record, it shows that the host forces the TLS, first of all, and the contents of the TLSA record maps the certificate using uh, for the TLS by the host. So in summary, the ability to secure, uh, securely send the messages to a valid recipient domain helps, right? Helps your customer to ensure that the business critical and confidential information is delivered to the right recipient provided the destination domain support Dane. Okay, and of course, as I mentioned, the time allowed, I'll do the demo and show you, you know, where to do the, uh, the tricks in the ESA, in the CS, sorry, my bad. Right, so this is another feature that, that, that I'd like you to check out, right? It's a very super important feature because I'll treat this as a key differentiator as opposed to the uh, uh, other competitors. So we have to admit that the um, IP base or the connecting domain-based reputation is not as sufficient as before, right? Because of the multi-tenancies in the cloud as a trend of nowadays. Um, for example, the customers coming from O365 are sharing the, uh, the same IP address from the same O365 uh, uh, facility, right? So also, we also need to concern what if um, the from sending headers is actually abc at cisco.com, but the reply to header turns out to be abc at badguy.com which a lot of people doesn't really bother to actually open up the source to look at it, right? So we also have to think outside of the box because in this world, when you talk about information, it's just not about IP. There's so many things we can leverage with uh, by the CS. For example, the SPF information, the DMARC, the DKIM intelligence, all we can basically made up as part of the reputation scores query. So as you can see from the slide, uh, there are seven types of a reputation verdict that the administrator can use uh, inside the content filter. Uh, actions is kind of a similar to the rest of the content filter conditions, such as drop, quarantine, tag lock, delete, you name it. So it's mostly the same. It's just that there is additional type of uh, reputations which you can uh, you can utilize to determine uh, the actions you want to take on that specific message, right? Uh, but what is the difference between the SBS compared to uh, SBRS? Is that the SDR is no longer based on the score number. If you're familiar with SBRS, it is more about plus 10 to negative 10, right? The negative 10 is the bad IP, the positive 10 is the best IP, it's a, it's a great IP, that's right? So it's a great reputation IP. So, but in, in SDR, we, we no longer use a, 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 a numbers. In fact, we use something that is easy to read, easy to understand by everyone, even he or she is not a strong in technical, right? So it's easy to be read and human, uh, readable friendly, 
right? So the ability to, of, um, of filtering the message based on SDR helps the organizations to prevent uh, attacks on the organization's network by you know, combining the sender IP reputation check with the sender domain reputation check. This, is, this will help improve the overall efficacy of the appliance, first of all. Secondly, is to identify the domain spoofing based on a mismatch in the message header, which I've just mentioned, the from and the, and the reply to is different. Uh, last but not least, to protect against the illicit message senders using multi-tenancy systems along with uh, legitimate uh, message sender, which sadly is sharing the same IP address with them. So, for example, Cisco.com and TheBadGuy.com happen to using the same IP, but because of the domain reputation, you were able to differentiate which one is good, which one is bad, rather than simply just based on IP address. So this is good news about having these features in version 12. Okay, so this is another thing that is not entirely with the CS, but something to do with the NGSMA. I believe you already know about that because the NGSMA already introduced into the cloud-based email security. So what this slide is trying to tell you is that we are now ready to push out the same interface to the on-prem email security in both virtual and the, and the phys physical deployment mode. Yes, you heard it right. It is coming soon, right? Because now we are ready to actually make it more uh, on-prem basis. Well, just to be clear that we still remain the, uh, the user experience and the user interface uh, revamp, focus on the monitoring, the tracking, the quarantine, the safe list, and the block list. Well, we are also ensuring that the reporting information is derived from the new and enhanced features in the version 12 will be supported uh, by the on-prem SMA release as well. Well, next is the, uh, the smart licensing program. So that's in many words. There are so many words in the, in the slide, so I don't really need to repeat it. So let me have a quick touch base here, right? So basically what it's trying to say that Cisco Image Security is actually now part of the family in the smart licensing scheme uh, for you to manage and, you know, monitoring the, the, the appliance uh, licenses in a more flexible way. So all you need to do is just to register your appliance with the, with the CSSM, uh, the short form of a Cisco Smart Software Manager. So it's a centralized platform that gives you a great visibility in terms of all the licensing, you know, related to your purchase Cisco product, which of course, including the Cisco Email Security Appliance. Uh, you can see there's a yellow uh, YouTube link that I just attached in the slide. It gives you much more informative instructions on how the CSSM looks and tastes like. So you, at least you have a readiness when you start to engage the, the, new, the licensing program with your client or with your customers. Okay, so come back to a little bit with the CS on version 12. So we also added another, another enhancement. This is not something new, but is an enhancement of something that's already available in the, CS, in the CS called the M and the threat grid uh, reputation protection. So this is more about uh, threat grid this time. So threat grid, uh, as of today, on the version 11.1, uh, which AKA the latest, the latest GA version, only support uh, threat grid um, cloud as well as um, on-prem without failover, right? So, but right now, we're able to allow you to do a failover between multiple on-prem threat with plans, uh, but have to keep in mind that it is not a load balancing basis, okay? It is kind of a failover so that if you have the first box up and running, um, the sample, you know, the unknown file will keep on sending to the primary uh, appliance and unless the primary is down, it will just go down to the second one without, you know, uh, requiring a clustering setting behind of the threat with appliances. Uh, the second thing is that I want to mention is the support of the override threat grid score. So in the short means is that now you have the ability to work in conjunction with the score that you customize in the threat grid and take actions in the policy setting. So instead of based on what the scores has been determined by the threat grid, now you can change the score and, and tell them and tell the CSS that if the scores matches the one that I've customized in the setting, treat it as a bad, you know, as a bad file or, or a malicious file. And, and now you have to say on it. Okay. So one more thing that I want to bring up is the enhanced help. So this is kind of cool. This is more about, uh, it's not entirely the UX improvement, but it's something that is added on top of the CES version 12.0. It's called the Enhanced Help Foundation. So the goal is to put in all the very informative uh, information, sort of technical guidance, like how to guide the best practices, the release note, something that is very educational, right? All in the single source of, uh, uh, you know, destination. So it assumes a, a layover box on top of an existing interface. So, and some of the users, you will definitely love it because it makes you very easy to set up something that is complicated in the CS. Uh, you'll fall in love with this feature because uh, the Enhanced Help Foundation will able to assist you to configure the features. 
uh, through all the configuration flow. And there will be a flow that is step by step to show you how to do it. I'll definitely, I'll, dem I'll demonstrate in the CS later on. Okay, so this is a huge kind of a overall overall of a of a of a roadmap that it looks like as of today. Um, I'm, I'm I'm not going to spend too much of time to explain every single features on it, but I definitely wanted to tell you what it is means. Okay, so starting on the January of the calendars 18, we already have done so many enhancements as well as the uh, updates on the product. So you can see how how deep I mean how much we have invested throughout the years, right? So starting on the 11.1, we already have the M Unity with the with the endpoint, you know, M for endpoint portal, so that you can have the policy sharing between the CS as well as the M for endpoint portal. Uh, we also increase the amount of the M file type uh, supported by the CS as opposed to version uh, 11.0. Uh, we also supported the shortened URL uh, uh, handling. That means if something bad hiding behind of the shortened URL, we're able to see that, we're able to capture it, and we're able to do something about that. So this is also something that we have uh, introduced in version 11.1. Uh, same goes to attachment. If there's a bad URL or malicious URL found in the attachment, we're able to cap get hold of it. If the email is considered unscannable due to certain re reasons because of RC non-compliance or the message header broken, there is an additional custom ha uh, custom setting for you to handle this type of email. So for the Quest program, there is not much of a changes except we have um, provide additional language supported and the sample plugin. Um, on the March of uh, calendar years 18, we introduced the NGSMA as well as site-to-site -site VPN for the U.S. So for those who don't know what a site-to-site -site VPN means is that if you have a cloud email security, um, uh, email securities on the cloud, and you have the requirement of, um, of integrating um, the uh, Active Directory settings or the uh, CIS, CIEM or the, we call it the incident management uh, platform in your premise, uh, you, you want it to do it securely, well, so site-to-site -site VPN will, will allow you to basically connect the, uh, the CES back to your on-prem uh, AD or the on-prem theme uh, with, with a much more secure and encrypted way via the VPN tunnel. So that is actually has been offered in the US, okay? And in the June, we offered two features called the domain protection and the advanced fishing protection, which I'll deep dive uh, in one of the sections today. So. Now, this is the main focus. So this is the main focus about what I've just wrapped, uh, that, that listed out. So in version 12, um, we slated to have that released on the November end of November 2018, which is this month. So just a quick wrap up, we have a stick and taxi support, a Dane, SDR, Center Domain Reputation, M Enhancement, uh, Threat Grid Clustering Enhancement, NGSMA On-Prem, Smart Licensing. So these are the, uh, the, the new enhancement, new and enhancement features in version 12. So it comes to the CS program, we have LDAP connectors. So that is mainly for the users, uh, customers that actually have the AD Active Directory set up on the Azure platform. Um, you will have the LDAP connectors that allow you to uh, configure the LDAP connections back to your Azure AD, right? So this is the connectors that are going to be available on the cloud email uh, security. And now an another excited news is the, that we have two data centers available in APJC, right? Uh, and of course, we will start to roll out the site-to-site -site VPN service to all the to all this uh, data center as well. So, comes to CS, uh, come to CRES program, the encryption program uh, is going to be much more fascinated as opposed to January. So, we started to include the pull action, that the pull encryption support. We're able to support a bigger size of attachment, and we have an enhancement in terms of how we support envelope in the in the mobile platform. Uh, also, there are two more things that I want to bring up, uh, bring up is, this, is, is the releases of, uh, of a CSMP, Secure Management Platform, which I'm going to touch base later on, uh, as well as the CTR, Cisco Threat Response Integration with, this, with the SMA. Okay, so is, is there any questions for the feature before I move on to the demo? All right. If there is no questions, I'm just going to quickly do a couple of demos on what I've just introduced in the version 12. I'll just hang on a second. So I hope you still can see my screen. Okay. So this is... Okay, so let me just make it bigger. Right, so 
basically this is the CS on um, that is owned by uh, the TME. So I quickly logged in. So it's actually still look the same. There is no NG, uh, there is no next gen um, user interface on the CS. Um, that is only happened on the on the SMA security uh, management platform, right? Uh, but for the CS, it's still going to be the legacy interface. But of course, eventually we will do something about that, but not not for now. Okay, let me quickly tell you where to go with uh, with the uh, with the stick and taxi, right? So on the version 12, you have something called external threat fit manager, right? So if you click on it, you can see that uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do. For example, um, you can add a source of the taxi that uh, you know the, the the taxis that that you wanted to be do uh, want to be included usually going to be um, in in the local basis right so one of example for example uh, hail a taxi right so if you click on that hail a taxi uh, you will need to mention uh, where is the host so usually this is this is the um, uh, the the source information that will be given by the uh, uh, by the stick resource right so what you can do is you can add in the host of the uh, the taxi and tell them that which is the polling path and the collector names on what type of things that you want to collect. So some of them may be free, uh, some of them may need to be subscribed. So it's up to you, it's up to the customers to, to find out, you know, how they want to engage with the taxi service, right, taxi subscription. So you can see there is a polling um, options for you to decide how long you want to pull the information from the taxi sources as well. Uh, it can go up to 50 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, down to 50 minutes all the way to 24 hours maximum. And how long you want to keep the traffic, uh, you know, to be act to be considered as an active fit uh, in your in your CS is up to you. Um, is it going to be in the HTTPS or HTTP? Again, it's up to you whether there's authentications in order to pull the, um, uh, the source, the, 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 the sticks from the taxi, right? Again, it's all based on the information given by the taxi resource, all right? So once you have the configuration uh, completed, you will able to see a information whereas there is a successful pull happening on art, right? If not, then you probably have to find out what's wrong with that. Maybe something to do with the setting or something to do with the firewall connections that is not allowing the 443 or port 80. That you need to work out with the, with the network administrator or the security administrator of the, of the customers, right? Or if you want it to suspend or you want to resume the polling, it's up to you, which there is an option for you to stop it or allow it. Again, this is all uh, uh, available for the customers who upgraded to version 12. Okay. Now, once you have the information, what's next, right? Now you already have the information fit into your CS. So the so CS not only have the uh, 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 a typical SBRS center-based reputation, uh, not just comes with the uh, web reputation or I just mentioned the domain reputation as well, right? So now you also have something that is more local, something that is more, um, uh, you know, um, um, re relevant, you know, to your region, right? That that might be very useful for you to make some customization as according to the to the to the local threat, right? And now there are two places you can do. Number one is the hat. I believe you know what is hat, right? Hat is more on um, um, the filtering of of, uh, of a sender based on IP or the sending domain, oh sorry, of the sender uh, uh, email domain, right? So that's where you can actually add the hat and say, you know what, I want to include that into the uh, into the hat level. For example, um, comes to the blacklist, um, not only I want it to use the sender based reputation blacklist, I also want to use a uh, sticks, for example. So you can click on the blacklist and choose the um, external threat fit that you just configured. For example, um, I decided to add Alien Vault as one of the threat fit that I wanted to use to blacklist the IP, which has been captured by Alien Vault or shared by the Alien Vault, right? So just save, save it. That's all, right? That's all you need to do. So from now on, if there is some information that is actually shared by Alien Vault as the, uh, as the active uh, fit in the CS, it will be treated as one of the um, uh, entry that is matches the blacklist in the hat table, right? I hope it makes sense to you, okay? So this is one of the way. Second way is the better way, content filter, right? So you can come to the content filter. That's where you're able to add some of the uh, threat feed into it. Okay, let, let's give you some of the example. For example, um, the URL. So they already have a couple of things that we created. I can just click in and show you what we did. So for example, uh, you can select the conditions as the URL reputation, right? In here, you can say, instead of using the reputation which you normally see, 
malicious, nutri uh, neutral, and, and, and clean, you can choose the external trap feed and say, oh, from now on, because I've been selected the, uh, uh, let's say, Hello Taxi, right, as the one to fit the bad reputation uh, URL. So you can choose the Hello Taxi and just add it, right? And from now on, whatever that is matches the, the, the URL that is bad from uh, Hello Taxi, it will be considered as, as something that is matches the condition. And of course, it's up to you to, um, you know, to determine the actions you want to take based on that match, uh, you know, entry. For example, in this case, we just wanted to say um, URL is match uh, on the ETF. So, or of course, you can do other actions, for example, drop it, right? It's up to you, okay? So what else we can do, right? With the stick and taxi, there are a lot more, but I, I don't want to deep dive into it because of the time that, that, you know, that we need to watch at, right? So let's have a quick look at what else we can do. For example, um, we can use that for, for file hash, right? That means we can use based on the file hash, we can do it based on the domain reputation, we can do it based on the file info, right? So let's check out the file info, yeah? So click on it. Right? So that means you can go into a chat's file info and say, again, external threat fit, select the one that you wanted to match with the threat fit, right? So if it matches, what else you want to do, right? You can select that as well. And then what else you want to do based on the action, you can do something on that messages that matches the, the feed, okay? So if no question, I will let you see the next um, feature, which is SDR, okay? So SDR only works, it's called the standard domain re uh, reputation. It only works in the reputation, uh, only works in the content filter. So let's quickly go back to the content filter. It is actually one of the conditions, okay? If you click on app filter, you will be able to see that, okay? That condition, here you go, right? So domain reputation is the new feature as a condition in the content filter. So this is the only place you were able to find it, all right? It's not in the hat. Don't forget, hat is just based on the IP, uh, the sending IP or the sending host name, right? It is not domain. So if you wanted to make sure that uh, the, um, you know, the IP is not, is not blocking the good domain, you probably have to come to here and, and let the domain reputation to decide what, you know, what to do. Right, so this is something that you can do, for example, if it's tainted, um, poor and awful, you can click OK, and then you can choose the action you want to do, okay? You can say, I want to block it, right? I want to drop it, you can do that. Or, based on the, the age, because sometimes, usually the, the ransomware, they, they are based on a newly seen domain, right? They, cre they quickly create something new and they just vanish, right? So in order to make sure the domain is, is stable and, and is reputable, you probably need to say if, um, if the domain age is less than one day, right? You probably have to watch out, right? Because if something has been created in just a day, right? And then it just vanished tomorrow, it's something fishy. It just smells smell fishy, right? That means the domain is something wrong. Then you probably have to watch out. Again, you can tag it, you can do something about that, okay? And of course, the reputation's unscannable. What else you wanna do? If the domain doesn't have a reputation, come back. So what you wanna do, right? Last but not least, external traffic once again. You can use the traffic to actually decide what type of domain reputations is going to match with the, with, the, with the stick feed that you get it from a taxi resource, right? And that can be selected based on what type of uh, headers you want to check on. Remember, if I told you before, a lot of people don't look into reply to because the from is the only one that only that is displayed on the, on the Outlook client. It's not the reply to unless you go into the source and find it out, right? So it's up to you to decide and say, oh, I want to look into reply to. Who knows? In the reply to, you might have a bad reputation that uh, domain that is inserted in the reply to, for example, abc at badguy.com, right? So that will able to get uh, get you to uh, uh, to pinch out the uh, the bad guys from reply to um, before the users click the uh, reply. Because what happens is that the user receive from let's say alex at cisco.com as a from, but if they click reply to, they might reply to alex at badguy.com. So the 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 critical information might have just gone to the bad guy, right? Because of that, you're able to nail it, pull it out and show it in front of the, in front of users, right? Or you can quarantine it so that the user's aware of something bad uh, or something wrong with this email, okay? So that is the main reputation. Now, the third one that I wanted to show you is the Dane. So Dane is very simple. Basically what happened, as I mentioned before, Dane means that you wanted to send an email to some, somebody that is, that is Dane active, right? So if you started a start TLS, 
um, to a specific domain and you know that the domain is very critical to be sent over to the right users, Dane will be highly recommended because if you decided to turn on the Dane, okay, let me show you how to do it. For example, uh, it's going to be on um, destination control because you are setting up the Dane based on destination. So go to destination control, um, Dane dash esa.com is one of the domain that's set up for Dane already. It's a Dane ready domain. Okay, so we will say Dane mandatory or opportunistic, right? It's up to you. But with that, it means that I will make sure the Dane will be will be adopted, right? When I send a, a start TLS uh, uh, request to this domain, right? So when the user send an email to Dane dash esa.com, what happens is it will go and say, I want to have a start TLS. The domain is supposed to accept start TLS. If there is a man in the middle rejected or strip off the start TLS, you will start it to look up the Dane dash ESA again on the DNSSEC to find out whether there's a TLSA sitting on top of it. With the TLSA, with the TLSA fingerprint, you can find out the actual um, email destination that you're about to send to. So this is this is a good thing about Dane. So that that means you will definitely be able to send the email to the right person. All right. So this is how you do it and make it happen. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. So if there's no questions, I'm going to tell you the fourth uh, features in the in the in in the version 12. That is M enhancement, right? So now we go into the M enhancement. We click on the global setting. It's very simple. There is nothing uh, fascinated. All you need to do is to change the threshold, right? Because the default value is 95. It means that if the scores is 95 and below, it will be considered as a malicious or a bad file, right? You can override that. You can override that by changing the value to something higher. For example, uh, if it's 75, uh, I wanted to treat it as a bad, you know, as a bad file straight away. So you can have the say on it, uh, but do it carefully, right? If you really want to do it, um, you should have a lot of analysis before that, okay? So this is very simple. Changed it and you're done, all right? And of course, I forgot not forget to mention about the um, the inclusions of um, of a threat grid cloud, which allows you to include more than one threat grid server from now on. Because in b before before version 12, you only can add one server, but right now you can add more than I think up to six or seven, right? Of a threat grid appliance into into single ES, uh, CS. So if you have the first one, um, you know. Uh, timeout, you can actually go to the second one, the third, the fourth, the fifth, as a failover, right? So this is something new in the version 12 as well. Okay. Last but not least on the version 12, which I wanted to bring up is the how to, right? So how to is also pretty cool. So this how to is actually giving a very informational guidance on how to set up the stuff. Okay, let me give you one of the example. For example, you want to set up a DKIM, right? Uh, or DKIM is kind of complicated, like you want to set up a DKIM. So what are you going to do? Click on it, right? It started to teach you now, okay? It will say, guide me, right? Click on that. So you have to say, all right, make sure you switch to the cluster level. Yes, you did. Next. Okay, what else you need to do? Okay, go to the mail policies, right? Click on the verification profile, right? So it guides you through, right? And it says, start to add the profile. And then it brings you another, say, put in the name. Okay, what else? Okay, change to something. Next, if you don't want to do it. Okay, what else? Next. See that? It gives you a lot of information about what you need to do, right? And of course, you can skip it if you don't want to do anything, right? You can click next and next and next, and it will give you the, the guidance all the way to the end until you commit the changes. So this is what the How to uh, Enhance Help Foundation is able to, you know, uh, to make your life a lot easier, especially for the client who used the CS for the first time. Okay? All right, any question? No? All right, so let's get back to the presentation and move on. Okay, let me just bring it up again. Okay, so this is another topic that I wanted to mention is that has nothing to do with the version 12. It's also another thing that we have committed in the roadmap and it's gonna coming soon as well. So number one that I wanted to shout out is the is the announcement of two incoming new data centers in Asia Pacific region, 
right? So one is already um, almost come to the end is the one in Melbourne, Australia, right? So Melbourne, Australia, I believe it it, it should be ready either by this week or next week because the um, the news is is uh, to me is that they should be up and running by end of this November, right? So Melbourne is coming soon, very very soon. The next thing is going to be in Tokyo, Japan. Right, so the the strategy for the Asia Pacific is to use the local provider, so to satisfy the data access and sovereignty requirement in specific region, especially like Australia and Singapore. Right, so they wanted to have something that is in Asia Pacific or even in own country. Right, so that that will help them to fulfill the requirements or some kind of a compliance requirement. All right. So as I mentioned, there is a quest support on the uh, on 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 the uh, what do you call it on the end of this year, right? So we have a couple of things that we have uh, um, released. For example, uh, the inclusions of the pull encryption support, because currently we only support the push, but we will have the pull included as well. Uh, the improved versions of the mobile-based envelope to fix the issues due to uh, JavaScript dependencies. Um, there is a couple of the def uh, defect or the uh, service you know request has been opened up due to these re uh, issues, but we decided to actually make some enhancement on it so that we will able to rest the case, you know, the case for, for good, right? Um, and one more thing is the DMARC based enhancement on the, CR, uh, on the CRS, which I would like to give a bit of explanation. Uh, it means that when the sender is, is, is using the CRS portal to send the uh, encryption email, uh, the CRS will spoof, right? It was accidentally spoofing the email domain of the sender and it will kind of be able to break the DMARC verifications on the recipient side, right? Because you're supposed to send from Cisco.com. And on the DMARC side of um, uh, verification, you're supposed to see that, oh, it's supposed to come from uh, uh, a specific SPF or a, spe a specific DKIM you know, uh, record, right? But because of your email delivered from a CRES, it breaks it, right? It breaks the, uh, the delivery, um, and, and we, just, we definitely need to find a way to fix it. So what we're going to do is we modify the CRES in a way that uh, when the sender is sending the email using the CRES portal, we add CRES.Cisco.com to the from headers and the reply to uh, so that the, uh, the email that, that actually you send, right, will be, will be displayed in the reply to instead, okay? So the from will be CRES.Cisco.com, but the reply to will be the original sender. So that will help breaking, uh, stop, you know, um, breaking the uh, DMARC verification. Um, so far, we only make the changes for the senders that is registered with the CRES using Gmail, AOL, and the, and the Yahoo Mail. Okay. Okay. So this is something new as well. Uh, we actually uh, envisage the inclusions of a of a of a Cisco Threat Respond with SMA um, by end of November, because what happened is. I believe you, you should know about the CTR, right? It's the same CTR that, you, that you're familiar with. There is nothing changed on the SMA, right? It's just that starting from the SMA uh, version 12, which we will release for the on-prem and, and the virtual, uh, it will allow the CTA to, CTR to get the feed from the SMA, right? So that they have better visibilities of the details of the files and the URL pertaining to the, to the mail flow, right? So it, it, in, in other words, the CTR able to provide the users uh, or the customers the ability to correlate uh, a global threat uh, telemetries with the local data from the multiple resources. One of them is the Cisco email security. This is something that I just wanted to bring up is because, as I mentioned just now, CTR by end of November able to get the fit from the SMA, right? There is no much changes on the CS on the SMA per, uh, per se. But on December or early next year, we will allow another way, right? So from the SMA, you will able to pivot yourself to the CTR, right? And from the, from the SMA, you can actually go and find out the information that you want to check specifically on the CTR. So the SMA will have a link for it to click on, pivot to the CTR. You can quickly investigate the things that is re related to the one that you are uh, interested from the, from the SMA uh, tracking information. Okay, so it will be a two-way um, uh, two um, uh, handshake uh, by the end of December or uh, beginning of next year. Okay, so this is one last thing that I wanted to introduce in the product update is the introduction of the Cisco SMP, stands for Security Management Platform. So this is a hosted security match platform that is targeted on uh, telcos and uh, MSSP. So email security will be the first offering on the platform. So CSMP actually created a new horizons of a Cisco security product portfolio. 
to be available to the SMA, uh, SMB market, but in a hosted fashion, right? So the high level of the roadmap for this offering is to uh, going to have the WSA FTD um, in the early springs of next year, but not committed until further notice from the you know for the product team, right? Um, now. Before I moved on to the next topic, like the actual next topic, I'll just make a short pause here for, for a while in case you need me to rewind or make a quick uh, questions for me. Otherwise, I'll carry on to the next topic. Okay, any questions for me so far? I see uh, all the questions have been answered by Jennifer, uh, Alex. All right, that, that would be great. That would be great because we actually kind of... Uh, you know, running out of time, so we need to make sure, you know, if there's any questions, they quickly bring up and we're able to address this straight away, all right? All right, let me carry on to the next topic. If you're able to remember uh, one of the one of the service that we have introduced uh, in the roadmap is the Cisco Domain Protection and Cisco Advanced Phishing Protection. Well, these are two different uh, uh, services outside of CES, okay, outside of CES. So for some of you, you should heard of that already. Okay, it may be a reminder for you, but some of them you might find it very fascinating if this is the first time for you to to know about that. Okay, um, so without further ado, let quickly do a rundown. Okay, and ask yourself whether the email security is still relevant, right? In the 2018, I mean, we we tweet, we chat, right? We we do some WebEx and and sometimes even jabbering or using the WebEx team, right? So who else is using email, right? But to be honest. Is it still need to bother to sell email security? Unfortunately, unfortunately, the answer is yes. The email security is still one of the biggest concern for your customers. That is why the market is still very strong out there. And in fact, this is one of the information that the Talos has provided. Talos is actually able to track one of the features, uh, one of the incidents where uh, the malware. Uh, there are four types of phishing document has been used in a single document. So all they wanted to do is basically to steal the password to record the key, keystroke, right? And and sometimes the email is is actually more in the business email compromise form as well because all they want is just to get the information or the money out of the corporate account, right? So that is the reason why email security is still very strong nowadays because email is still by far the first threat factors for the customers out there, right? And your customer definitely need us to help them to combat these kind of breaches. Right, now, things is not that easy, right? It doesn't just stop like that. Okay, phishing, ransomware, that is kind of straightforward. Although they are very dangerous and scary, but tough luck, right? The bad actors, you know, the bad guy out there, they are more innovative than us, right? They keep on have a lot of the innovative ideas in terms of how they want to trick you, how they want to breach you, uh, you know, create a lot of breaches in order to get those information from you or money from you, right? So now what happened is the attack has actually continuously evolved from a content-based deception into identity impersonation, right? So when we talk about that, there are two ways they're able to do it for now, right? For now. They keep on involved, but for now, there are two ways that we, we, we're able to uh, uh, get hold of. Number one is impersonating as a person, right, as a sender, right? So this is very simple, right? I just have to do a bit of social engineering, find out, you know, who is the top level guys in the company, um, and all I need to do is, oh, Cisco, okay, CEO is Chuck Robin. Let's do it. So I'm going to use Chuck Robin as me, right, to send an email to you, right? As a employee, because you looked at the email that has been fabricated in, 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 in such a well manner, you started to believe it and you started to do it and, and, and as according to my instruction. For example, sending the money to somewhere else or sending some important information back to me, which turns out to be a bad guy. Right? So this is one of the ways. The second way is using a brand. Right, so you use a good brand, for example, Citibank, Bank of America, uh, Combank, right, or maybe Cisco, right. It's also one of the good examples. So you might see a lot of a phishing is not just simply based on content, but sometimes they make it so real to the fact that you thought this is really come from the come from the company that you've been always trusted to, you know, to deal with or do business with. So because of that, well, you know the rest. You will click on it. You will basically put in your information, and boom, they have the information. They can do whatever they want. They can pull out the the money is out from your bank uh, bank account. They can actually wiring some some uh, you know uh, some cash out to another place, right? Or worst case, they will cause a lot of um, you know um, uh, illegal activities based on based on your account, right? So money laundering and things like that. 
So it's very dangerous that we need to kneel or, or, or pinch down, right? So today we're going to focus on that, right? With the additional two security features which we have been introduced back in the late, you know, June this year, right? So the first one that I want to talk about is called the Cisco Advanced Fishing Protection. Well, listen out. It's called Cisco Advanced Fishing Protection. So it stands for, uh, the short form is CAPP. So I mentioned CAPP henceforth, okay? So CAPP is a way um, uh, to protect your inbound email, right? To protect your inbound email, right? It's actually going to find out whether the sender is good or is bad or is fabricated or impersonate, right? They were able to find out based on the intelligence that they have, uh, uh, learning from your environment, just to prevent, hope, hope, you know, in in uh, in favor of a prevent BEC attack. BC stands for business email compromise. So what unique about this cut with features is it not only allows you to set up policies to prevent the BEC, it uses the intelligence to create the understanding of you know the relationship between the senders and the receiver. So it uses the machine learning to understand like who is sending the email to your environment, over what sort of a domain, what kind of email address, what is the device, right? These are all the concern. This is all the elements that, that you will learn in order to find out the pattern of your receiving, you know, uh, ecosystems or the behavior of a specific customer, right? And then those information will be correlated in order to build a better understanding of who is actually the bad guy and the real guy, uh, sorry, a, a good guy in the real-time basis. Okay, I mean, if I wanted to explain further, right, I can, but let me just quickly go through that. It means that Cisco is using Talos. Good, right, it's great. And we're now offering Stick and Taxi, which is even better. But what happened is APP basically augment this defense based on what he able to learn automatically from your sending pattern, right? It just not only correlate with the Talos domain reputation, it also correlate with the authenticity scores of every single email senders into your environment, right? And based on those critical elements, it helps you to prevent the deception-based attack. So the local intelligence, including such as your organizational behavior, your infrastructure behavior, which I mentioned before, the devices, uh, the individual behavior, the way you send, how the way you actually uh, writing the email, and the relational model behavior that makes more informative, you know, in informative decisions about which senders is actually really call themselves as, right? So with that, you're able to prevent the phishing attack or the BEC attack more efficiently, right? Okay, so another good element about APP is that he allows the admin to do some things on the email that has been suspected by uh, as a as a BEC by APP, right? So APP has something called a, a remediation policy remediation, which you can set up a policy and say, well, if this email is actually matches this type of a, a deception, do something about that. For for example, you can delete it, you can quarantine, you can send it out to somewhere else, right? You, there is a policy for you. It's, it's, it's everything automatically. You can go into the policy page and do it you know, on your own, right? Or else, for those that you wanted to do it manually, we have something called on-demand remediation, it means that you can actually do a search on a specific sentence or a specific uh, subject or searching criteria, go in, pull out the email, and take actions on them, right? As according to the search results, we call it on-demand rem on demand remediations, right? So what you, what you can see on the slide is basically the high level of uh, how these remediation features can work, okay? Now quickly move to the next service that I just uh, wanted to introduce. It's called a Cisco Domain Protection. Well, do not confuse with Cisco Advanced Phishing Protection. They serve different direction, okay? Cisco Advanced Phishing Protection serve inbound traffic, means the email that receives by your customer's uh, employee, right? Or your client's employee. Cisco domain protection is different direction, is more on the outbound email that your customer's sending out to another end, right? Or your customers that uses the third party service to send the email on their behalf. For example, the email marketing campaign or um, some email agencies, marketing agencies, right? Like, like MailChimp, Marketo, Blue Type, right? So these are the these are the, uh, a provider that you need to actually uh, consider as well, right? So there is a lot of bad actors, right, out there. Basically, make use of your domain to do some bad intent 
For example, they use Cisco.com to actually ask the users to uh, to access and download the software. In fact, it's not because all they want is just to get the user information like the username and the password because sometimes the username information and the password might be matches to other sites that is more critical for the users like a bank account or some kind of an email access, right? With the same password, they can do a guess about you know how you actually scripted your password. So with those reputable uh, domain email, right, you were able to uh, uh, to cheat on the the, uh, the the receivers a lot easier uh, rather than uh, doing the phishing based on content, right? So how we can actually make sure this is not happening, right? We have something called Cisco Domain Protection, as I just mentioned. So what it's really do is it makes use of a service called DMARC, okay? I'm not sure if you heard of that. DMARC stands for Domain Based Message Authentication, Reporting, and Confirmance. So it is an email authentication standard. So once you have the senders um, um, setting up a DMARC in the DNS, well, there is a real-time report that you can, you can request the receiver to send back to you uh, from the report. You can actually go in and find out which, how the sending behavior looks like, how many emails that has been sent out as considered as legit, and how many send out the email that is considered non-compliance to your, to your DMARC record, right? And, and Cisco Domain Protection gives you the full visibility about what is happening out there, right? The entire sending ecosystems, right? In case you're not aware of, I'll tell you one thing, DMARC has been mandated by the demand, uh, Department of uh, Homeland Security, and, and it has been adopted by a lot of well-known companies, especially in the finance and healthcare uh, sector. So for those that is, that is dealing with the bank, dealing with the public sectors, right, DMARC is definitely something that they'll need to look at, right, because it is a standard now in, uh, in a lot of, uh, you know, first world country, right, like US, Australia, you know, and EMEA. Okay. So this is also one of the quick slides that we pull out from a CDP, right? So you can see that CDP gives you a visibility in terms of uh, which third parties senders that is helping you to send the email in day by day basis, right? So from here you can quickly realize, oh, Cisco.com actually sending email um, not only by using own email server, but Google, Mailchimp, uh, Marketos, or the Salesforce is actually sending the email using Cisco.com. Why is that, right? What is that? Is it because the marketing team is giving the authority or because the procurement team is actually outsourcing some of the things to the, uh, to the third-party email sender? You don't know, right? So because of that, as an as a, as a email security administrator, you have a full visibility and to find out why, right? So you can even get the, um, uh, the sample of the email to find out whether the email is actually legit or not. And you can always refer back to your uh, company's department to find out whether this should supposed to be treated as a, as a genuine third-party senders or not, right? If yes, you can whitelist them. If not, you know what to do. You can blacklist them and then change the DMARC record, boom. So those bad senders will be dropped in the future by the receivers who enforce the DMARC verification. Simple as it is. All right. So I know lots of you actually have experience of these two services already, right? And I'm sorry about that because due to the limited time given and the scope of coverage for this webinar, I'm going to bypass the demo. But don't worry, but don't worry. Go to dcloud.cisco.com, which is publicly available to all the partners in, in Cisco internals. Go in and look for these keywords, right? You will able to go in and, and, and look at how these things look like because we have a consistent amount of a synthetic data that has been injected into this D, uh, dcloud instances so you will able to see and feel how the reporting and the feature actually can do from there okay so don't worry just go in you will have all the information and and you can download there is a guide for you to, to to teach you how to go through every single features and how you do the demonstration in front of our customers based on that document guidance okay so this is another topic that I wanted to cover. Uh, let's quickly move on. Um, long story short, Cisco has introduced a new bundle that is very excited, not only for myself, uh, not only for internal, but also the customers. Trust me, they'll love it, okay? Simple way to describe it is it's a new bundle. The new bundle that basically combines the email security functionalities with the inclusions of the AMP, Advanced Mail Protection, and the threat width, which is the sandbox analysis, and various amount of uh, sample pack volume, which I'll bring up later on. Most important is already available in the GPL. Go in and get them. Okay, 
So this is a quick, simple, and a, a, a before and after kind of a comparison table, right? So look look at the left side. You can see back then uh, it's very struggling. A lot of people mentioned, oh, you know what? If we wanted to sell the full complete set of uh, features to the customers, we have to go in and search for the Cisco email security, and then we have to search for the AMP, we have to search for the threat grid, blah, 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 right? So that is so complicated. And uh, a lot of people need to need to find out the, the right SKU and, and need to insert the right an, an amount of seats into every single SKU just to sell it, right? And everyone said the same thing. Emails is so difficult to sell because of that, right? Well, we prove it that we listen to you and we, we, we take actions on it, right? And now here you go. On the right side, now we have a complete range of protection in the single SKU, in the simple SKU. We make it so easy to sell. You just have to make sure you know the SKUs, right? And you will able to tell the, uh, the, the, the customers confidently that it will be cheaper, right? 5% additional discount as opposed to searching the SKU uh, differently or separately, okay? So you can go into the CCW and, and, and go figure yourself. You will find out at least 4 to 5% of a discount if you do based on single SKU uh, on the left side, okay? I try that. <laughs> All right, so how you do it, three simple steps. I, don't don't worry, you will know it, okay? The first step is number one, choose the deployment option. Which one? Cloud, on-prem, hybrid, right? That's all. So pick the one that you want to do. And secondly is select the SKU, right? The SKU I will show you later on. Don't worry about that. And the third is the number of the users as well as how long you want to be. One year, three years, five years, up to you. So quick flip, all right? So this is also one of the things that I wanted to show you, right? So you have a two different type of... Um, what we call that, um, uh, categories, right? You have an inbounds and you have a premium. I hope you already know what is inbound and premium. If you don't, I will say it out loud here, right? Inbound is means that you have the inbound email security features, for example, anti-spam, antivirus, content filter, outbreak filtering, uh, gray mail, right? This is inbound. Premium means that you not only have the inbound, you also have the outbound. For example, DLP, and encryption. So it depends on what your customers really want, right? If they wanted to have the inbound only, there is no concern about encryption, there's no concern about the DLP, it's fine. Then inbound will be fine. So for those who wanted to have all the features, premium will be your pick, right? And now, once you know which categories they wanted to go with, you just have to look into the, uh, the SKUs that is listed uh, above on, on, the, on the screen, right? And picks out which band they uh, belong to. Right, so they can be uh, 1,000 users, 5,000 users, depends on the number of users you pick the right band. Okay, with this queue, it automatically included the MN threat grid subscription. So there is no need of you to look for M reputation and subscriptions, um, you know, from a different SKU. You can skip that. This will cover that nicely. Okay, as well as the number of the file uh, that that need to that that will be uh, allowed to be uploaded per day, right, to the threat grid based on the band. Okay. Same thing to the on-prem, same concept, right? For the on-prem, it's just that uh, instead of calling CSI, it turns out to be ESAI, right? So make sure you see the right SKU, okay? Based on the deployment option. Same goes to hybrid, right? Same goes to hybrid. Make sure you pick the right one, ESAI, right? And look for hybrid ESAI, right? So for those who don't know what is hybrid, hybrid means that the customers is still not ready to 100% uh, migrating from on-prem to cloud, or they're hanging in the limbo. Um, it, it is not going to happen in months, but years, right? So for that reason, hybrid will be the pick for them because it's a lot easy for them to, uh, you know, to decide, you know, how many seats they wanted to include. Um, otherwise, you will need to have a ESAI for a certain amount of users. You will have a CES, CESI for a certain amount of users. That is very complicated, right? So make a hybrid makes your life easy. So the highlight here is, if you use this, make sure the PID uh, product ID right is equal. Um, um, in terms of the terms, you need to make sure the terms is equal. Um, from what date to what date, one year, two years, three years, must be, must be the same. Uh, and make sure the start and the end date must be the same as well. Okay. So just bear in mind that uh, before I wrap up the topics, right? Just just bear in mind that we wanted to have a vision that make this SKU single SKU as a default bundle moving forward to all the new customers as well as the renewal customers, right? So for those renew coming soon, please recommend them to look into these SKUs moving forward. Okay. So make sure they started to look into it and extract them. Okay. 
So the thread width is the final part that I just want to mention as I just brought up, right? So different band, different number of, uh, of upload size, right? So instead of a 200 basis, uh, for those that is more than 10K, they automatically have 2,000 file upload to the thread width. So same goes to the, those that is uh, bigger than 50K, right? So they have 6,000 of file upload. So this will be something that they, they need to look at. Well, if the customers wanted to have a full-blown thread width cloud access, right? Um, like, for example, they wanted to have a thread with Panisha uh, access to the portal and checks out the systems and checks out the file analysis. Well, it's still not as part of the, the new SKUs, so they, need, they still need to be uh, ordered separately, right, um, for that thread, uh, thread with full cloud subscription. If they found that, let's say, for example, 200 is not enough, they want to have additional sample to be uploaded, this will be additional sample pack uh, SKUs that they need to add on as well, okay? hope this has made sense to you. Now, what this news bundles really helps you when compared to Proofpoint and Microsoft, right? So let's start with Proofpoint. Proofpoint have two things, right? They have two things that is able to uh, make a feature parity with our SKU. One is called a tap, one is called a trap. So what is tap is means target attack protection stands for AMP for us, right? Trap is called trap response pull, auto pool. That is actually the features that we call MAR, mailbox auto remediation. What good news for you is if they wanted to have these two features, they need to be additional costs added into it. Well, but for us, one SKU have everything. So it's going to be easy for you to talk about that, right? Okay, now it comes to Microsoft, right? For the Microsoft, O365 provide E3 as an entry level. You know that, right? But it's not enough because our customer knew that and they need to either upgrade the subscriptions to E5 and add the ATP for the better security protection, right? So for the customers pursue the E5 or, A, uh, or uh, ATP on top of E3, our new SKU will be a lot more cost effective to the customers. Okay, so this is something that you can bring up. Right. So what type of questions or what type of um, you know content that you should mingle with the customers, especially for those who are who who, who not actually uh, bought AMP before, right, and yet up to renewal. Or for those who actually, uh, you, you, you definitely want it to get the attention to see the value of the M because the SKUs comes with M, right? So you need to make sure they see the value of M, okay? Now, so what you have here, right, is a list of the key questions that you or your partner can ask to break the barrier, right? So some of the questions listed down here that I don't want to repeat, right? I, I don't care what kind of question it's going to be, regardless of the answers it will be. It's only serve one purpose, right? The purpose is to make the customer understand that they're better off buy or consider the new SKU because that will make more value to the expenditures on the email security protection. That's it, okay? Because with the M, the price could be a lot cheaper and give them better security protections down the road. So what is the mission here, right? The mission is to make the single SKU as the default bundle for Cisco email security moving forward, all right? Okay, I gotta put a stop here again before I move on to the final topic. Okay, nope, all right. Right, so I'd like to say thank you to all of you that, that stays with us so far, right, and spend the time listening to the webinar so far. It won't be long, okay? I, I promise you, it won't be long. Uh, I'll now quickly switch gears to and focus on securing O365. As you can see from the slide, it is a 20, um, hold on a sec, did I, okay, it, it's actually a 20 billion market, okay, for Microsoft, right? This information is not came out from myself, but publicly in the October earning call last year, right? The opportunity is massive out there, okay? So O365 has become a standard productivity platform, no doubt, right? Because moving to O365, it just makes sense. It just makes sense because cheaper and the company that is fewer than 1,000 users, they just better off move to O365 because it saved them up to 24% on average, right? So not only just cost effective, but they can access to the to the great productivities and the collaboration platform. Well, you have to you have to you have to basically uh, give that credit to them, right? It's easy to create, to share, and store the information, and simply adjust and upgrade the subscriptions. Very effective, uh, very efficient, right? Um, and and most important, O365 provide a basic email security call to exchange online protection. It's kind of kind of a good deal, right? But what's the catch here, right? But what is the catch here? The catch is Microsoft always mentioned, well, we have a very powerful production uh, productivities platform, but the security is never strong, okay? The security never be strong, especially when it comes to email security. That is why Gartner mentioned, 
as they estimated 50% of O365 will rely on the third-party security tools by 2021, right? And estimated up to 15% on 2016 alone, right? So in other words, more and more customers that is migrated to the O365, there will be more opportunity for the third-party security vendors to go out there and help them secure the email security. That's you. Okay? So in summary, in summary, what Cisco can do for them, right? So there are three parts we can see from here. Number one, we have Cisco Talos, right? Because our network is the, one of the biggest in the world, and, and, and this is basically the, fun, the fundamental of the Cisco email security. We're able to correlate millions of millions of data from the best intelligence feed available, um, you know, and, and, and from all kinds of points in the attack queue chain. So the breadth and the depth of the data means that Talos can stop more threat before they reach out to the customers. So this is the one take. The second take is that Cisco email security comes with the URL-based protection, right? So such as this, this kind of a risky link uh, that is available in the content-based uh, deceptions, we're able to get hold of them, drop the message, or even rewrite or even replace the hyperlink, right? Because don't forget, again, Talos, that makes us have a better web security intelligence, and Cisco email security can drop the email uh, automatically before he reaches out to the user's inbox. Well, consequently, we have stopped the URL-based threat faster. Well, not to forget to mention the last point, right? We have AMP, Advanced Mail Protection, as well as a threat grid that not only help us to block the known malware uh, and, and, and remediate you know, the emails uh, from the retrospective results, we also can do a sandbox and analysis if the file found unknown and quickly report the result back to the, the submitting CS uh, once the results is available. Okay, so that, that is why this is the three main point how Cisco email security can fit in and helps provide better email security to the O365 users. This is a pictorial slide that shows you how easy for you to integrate with Cisco email security as additional layer of uh, uh, protections upon uh, O365 email service. So please click on the link. There are so many informations out there that are actually going to teach you um, how to make them secure, right? So just go in and, and, and find out how you're actually able to set up the, uh, the integrations between the CES as well as the O365 without, without fuss. Now, we talk a lot of how CES can do uh, better on O365. You know, there's so many kind of uh, statements and theory on top of that. But how we can prove it, right? How we can prove it? Well, this is always a, um, you know, a, a pain point for the customers because you cannot change the MX record. There is a problem with, you know, with the customers uh, not allowing you to do the, the, uh, the, the journaling or the BCC, right, uh, on, on, on the POV phase. It's just struggling, right? So, well, Cisco actually have the tools. I believe a lot of you should already know about that, right? And Cisco actually still very, very, very highly promote on that tools called the threat analyzer, right? Because this is a great tool that is not going to interrupt them, yet able to provide uh, a threat information that is, that is, that is actually uh, received by the O365 uh, users, okay? So when the scanning completed, the, the customers will get a one-page report of a summary threat found, and it's very easy to show that why O365 is needed to be a second layer of protection, okay? So what is, what is Cisco threat uh, uh, analysis for O365, right? It is free. There is no impact the moment you do the O365. There is no downtime. You don't have to wait for uh, uh, off-peak hours. You can do it straight away because we are scanning on the email that is already received by the customers. That means we are not interrupting the productive flow, right? We only make use of a simple things called API, which AKA Microsoft Graph, that is, that is offering uh, by the O365 Azure platform. So once you're able to configure some stuff on the API as according to our instruction guide, you were able to start pulling all the emails that is sitting on the mailboxes. And then after a while ago, after a while later, you can showcase that, well, have a look at that, right? This number of uh, uh, spam, gray mail, viral attachment, malware, or the, or the URL that has been captured by the, uh, uh, by the CS via uh, the email that we have downloaded from the customer's uh, mailboxes, right? So this is very simple, okay? Once again, there's so many information and the collaterals out there pertaining to the Cisco threat analyzers. So please go into the Sales Connect, go to the Deep Cloud, right? You have tons of it out there, right? So one of the recommended is by myself is Deep Cloud Lab, right? Visit Deep Cloud, search for Cisco threat analyzers for Office 365. 
the version one is already available in all the data centers. We have five data centers, you should know it. So we, we have all of it in there. We're actually doing a stress test on the version two now. So the TME and the PM team are doing a stress test actively on the version two. That will provide a more options in terms of how you do the scanning, as well as make the reporting uh, interface more appealing. Okay, and, 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 and trust me, pretty soon, because now we are doing stress tests. So it shouldn't be long to, to be released in the D-Cloud as well. All right, so finally, we comes to a wraps up section, okay? So the wraps up section, as I mentioned, we have heaps of resources that helps you to better driving your potential deal into success a lot quicker and easier. So feel free to click on every one of those links and download the content, which is not limited to your uh, the new security services that I just mentioned, the domain protection and the advanced phishing protection, heaps of them. Um, you have O365 sales play. You have the, the, the step by step guides of a threat analyzers on how to do it, not only just the document, but the video as well. Um, a complete step of you know uh, all kinds of the, 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 the BDM and the TDM, uh, as well as the Gartner report, you will be able to get there. Sorry, not the Gartner, Roddy Carter report, you, you can get there as well. Um, not only that, you have a lot of videos, technical collaterals, competitive analyses in the Sales Connect. So very resourceful. I encourage you to go into Sales Connect, pay a visit if not yet, okay? Okay, so the to call action, right? To call action for you today. Number one, identify the, the Cisco email security customers that you can upsell them with the two new services that I just mentioned, right? The APP and the CDP, right? This is a very good traction and excitement about this service because because you know that it's going to complement the customers that is using a CES right now. So I highly recommend you to go out and start talking about that to your customers. The second call that I that I have for you today is O365 Bay customers. Once again. Tell them that what we can do for them if they if they still stuck with E3, right? Or uh, they, they they attempt to go to E5, which is a lot expensive. Talk to them. Um, if they don't know what to do, if they if you don't know what to do in order to persuade them, use a threat analyzers because that will help you to prove and showcase the better strength of Cisco email security as opposed to the the basic E E3, uh, aka the EOP, right? The third call today is the new, promote the new and the cool features that I just mentioned in version 12, as well as the additional features that I just mentioned, right? So you actually give the, give the customers a sense that, wow, see, Cisco is really continually invest a lot in the Cisco image security, right? So they never stop improving themselves. They never stop innovating and, and get themselves better in terms of securing the the email traffic for them, right? Please, why, please share them, you know, widely and 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 show them the releases uh, of of the gadgets that that is going to coming soon in the version 12. Okay, and and of course, don't forget about starting to using using the single skill for all the renewal or, or the new orders coming forward. Okay, it is cheaper, easier to manage to both Cisco and customer in the long term. It's definitely a win-win situation for all of you. Okay, so with that, I hope you found the webinars useful. Uh, and thanks for joining, and feel free to reach out for us with questions. Thank you, Alex. Uh, hey, Jennifer, is there anything that you want Alex to address from the Q&A? I don't see any new questions. I think most mm -hmm. of them answered. Cool. All right. Okay. Thank you, Alex, and thanks no again, worries. everyone for attending today's session. Uh, the slide deck and the recording will be available in Sales Connect, and the links will be shared to you via email within a week's time. Uh, just a quick reminder, once you end the session, a short survey will automatically pop up in your screen. We appreciate if you could spare a minute and fill out the short survey to let us know about your experience. Thanks again, and have a good day ahead. Bye, everyone.